And hello YouTube, this is GS9 Smart, and I'm here on a brand new video for Gaming with GS, and today we're going to talk about the Guild Wars 2 June 14th patch, and funnily enough, I did not think it was going to be this big, or have this much content in it, or it doesn't really have that much content in it, but there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, a lot of things that are sort of coming into the game that are becoming relevant now, that are striking me as important. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about. We're gonna try to not make this video too long. We're gonna try to go over everything quickly uh, because there are there are a lot of updates for PVE, PVP, War vs. World, raiding. So there's pretty much something for everyone. Uh, we've basically come to this point where ArenaNet finally is adding something for every uh, game mode, sort of. Like they are addressing every game mode. It's not like every update we're only getting PVE updates or only getting PVP updates. It seems like this patch has been the first in a long while where every game mode has been addressed and every game mode has really gotten some substantial updates that you can look forward to. So uh, I will have, I don't I don't know if I'm going to have exactly relevant footage in the background. I do. I will have a great deal of the footage will be me running around collecting posters for the new current event, which I'll go over later in the video. Uh, so if you want to watch it, you can, especially if you haven't done it yet, because I will show the location of all the posters. So I guess it's useful for you. Otherwise, I wouldn't really pay much too attention to the footage. You can just minimize and just uh, listen to me talk. So a uh, quick, quick a note about the channel real quick. I know some of you saw the E3 recap and summary that I uploaded to this channel. Only reason why that happened is because my uh, my original channel, my vlogging channel, where I usually upload the vloggy style stuff, got a copyright strike on an unfair one, a false copyright strike. Uh, however, I'm getting that taken care of. So, uh, for those of you who really weren't interested in that E3 stuff, apologies was was just a uh, last resort uh, decision because I needed to upload it somewhere. Uh, because my original channel couldn't upload the 20 minute video, so I thought, well, it's the gaming channel, why not upload here? Just a quick note on that, because I know maybe a few of you were confused. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, I have my notes structured here very weirdly. Uh, we're going to be jumping over the place a little bit, so just bear with me. But let's start with raids first. The new raid has been out, Stronghold of the Faithful. And as I said in a previous video, we're going to be dealing with the White Mantle. And what I've heard so far, and this is good news, this is good news for a lot of us, is that this specific raid, uh, this specific section of the raid wing, and mind you, we now have a complete raid wing. Uh, this entire raid wing is complete now, which also means you can continue your legendary armor collection. But we'll get to that in a bit. What I've heard is that this raid wing, this little section, tends to be easier than the other ones, which is good because this means that this this is an opportunity for a lot of you who haven't gotten into raiding as much, including myself, to start at this section of the raid wing, this third part. And if you're able to do it, maybe you'll get some motivation to the other ones because this one is a bit easier. It runs a bit different and uh, it's easy in the sense that every time you complete it, you get a little further in the raid. You sort of understand a bit more what you're doing. Uh, it feels like you're actually progressing and uh, that's what makes it a bit more fun and that's what makes it a bit more easier. So I do recommend you to try it out. I do recommend you to see if you like it, if you can handle it. I'm definitely going to be trying it. I've I've heard some people say that it's, it's fun to do and it's a raid that a lot of people can join who haven't started raids. Obviously, uh, you know, don't take it with a grain of salt. Don't think it's going to be a breeze through, but it is slightly a bit more easier to understand than all the other ones that they've released so far. So that's always good to hear. Uh, they did also make some bug fixes and adjustments to the Spirit Woods and Salvation Pass raids. So uh, nothing too major there. If you want to see those specific bug fixes, you can look on the patch notes, but nothing too amazing. Um, now, with this new raid coming out, I have seen some conflicting opinions with people saying that, well, there's a lot of story in these raids now and it feels like the narrative moving forward with the raid stories and I feel like I'm missing out because I don't want to do raids but there's a lot of story in those raids and I want to experience the story and I feel like I'm missing out because I'm not doing raids. Um, there's been conflicting ideas. Some, group, some groups of people are saying that, well, this story is just side story. It's not really required. It's not really necessary. It's, uh, it, it doesn't move the main story forward at all. And other people are saying that it sort of is and you sort of get a lot of useful information. Now, the big question is, 
do I need to do these raids? Am I missing out on any huge piece of story that is required for me to play the game and for me to enjoy the game? And to be quite frank with you, the way I've always seen it and from what I've seen, from what I've read, from the from the little raid content that I have done, um, no, it's not really anything that you need to do. You're not really missing out on anything. However, I will say this. Doing the raids is very enjoyable. There's going to be story in there. There's going to be lore in there that you can really appreciate. And these raids are so... It's like a, it's, it's such a small niche of the game that these raids tend to be very developed and work very well developed with story. And you can even see how we are now going further and further into the Maguma jungle map and you can see these maps develop and you can see the environment around you, you can traverse it and you see that, you know, we're actually traversing through the map more and it's really, it's really satisfying and it's really fun and it's really cool. So, are you missing out? Story-wise, no, you'll get background story. It is really just side story, um, but... I definitely will say it's worth it, though. Uh, the way you explore these raids, the way you complete these raids, they're done very well. And uh, I would say you're missing out on the fun and you're missing out on a great experience. You're not missing out on story, though. Uh, I don't think that, you know, the I don't think the narrative is moving forward anywhere with these raid wings. We're still basically... Uh, at the same state as we were at the end of Living World Season 2. In fact, the current events aren't even moving it forward very much either. Um, but hopefully we get Living World Season 3 before we get the next Raid Wing, because if we don't, then that's going to be crazy. Now, with this new Raid Wing, people are also able to continue their collection with the Legendary Armor. Now, you want to take a look on screen right now if you're not, because I do have pictures of the Legendary Armor Precursor. And I have seen many people complain that they're mainly tailored towards humans and that they should be making uh, different armor designs for the different races. Now, I cannot agree more to that point because these are legendary armor we're talking about. I don't want them to look the same on every single race. I want them to be a bit more tailored towards the classes, you know, towards the races, not the classes, towards the races. Uh, I've seen many complaints about people saying that the legendary armor should be tailored towards different races and they shouldn't just be tailored towards humans because that's what they look like. And, um, you know, we all know that it takes a long time for them to design this stuff, but it's legendary armor for crying out loud. Come on, you need to put some extra time into that. So now that all three raids can be completed, you can actually progress to complete the uh, legendary armor collection. Now, whether you can complete it entirely, I don't really know. I have seen some people already experimenting with Mystic Forge recipes and all this kind of stuff uh, in the Mystic Forge. I've seen some Reddit posts. So some people have gotten pretty far in the collection, but I'm pretty sure there's still going to be a time gate there. There's still going to be a wall blocking you from getting it because I'm not even sure if they actually have the complete legendary uh, armor set in the game yet or any piece of it even in the game yet. So... Um, but you can make some progression now. If you've completed all three raids, you can now actually make some progression, which is always good to see. Um, and that pretty much covers everything for raiding. Not much else really to talk about. Legendary armor is there. The new raid wings out. It's a bit easier. And uh, there's always been there's been there's a conflict of opinion between the story and between the uh, uh, people are saying that the legendary armor should be cultural armor. So let's go ahead and head into what I've next here. Let's head into PvP now. There hasn't been, I mean, there's not been a huge update to PvP or anything, but there has been some pretty exciting changes. And I personally like these changes because if you're like me, you like to complete all the reward tracks, right? And uh, some of these reward tracks are really good. If you're still doing your legendary backpack for PvP, you're probably doing the glorious armor box because you need the, uh, the fragments from that. However, after you've finished all the... Uh, reward tracks i'm only missing like one more reward track the question is well, what, what reward track do i want to do well now they've actually added auric weapons plated weapons bladed armor and laystone armor as options in the mordrum cache when doing the heart of moguma pvp reward track and that's great to hear and chalk weapons as well i missed that one that's great to hear because they weren't there before and now you can actually unlock the entire set and all the weapons that you would get from PvE in PvP, which is great because now I can redo those tracks and I can actually get a lot of this stuff 
that I'm not able to get in PvE because I don't spend too much time in those places. Same with the Silver Waste PvP Reward Track, you can now get the Carapace Armor Box, and now that also contains the pieces of Carapace Armor instead of just only the gloves, which I was always confused about when I finished that Reward Track, which is now good to see as well, uh, because I don't have that complete armor set either. So if you PvP a lot, now you have uh, some more items to go for and some more loot to go for because they added a ton of new stuff in these reward tracks and that's kind of everything for pvp small but still a good amount of new loot you can get now which i'm sure will make uh, many pvpers happy it's definitely made me look forward to looking at those reward tracks and redoing them now world versus world had a lot of updates here and it's i'm pretty sure a lot of people who do world versus world a lot are excited for this uh the reward track and participation system are now officially out of beta so they basically standardized it now and some pretty big changes here we now also can get the gift of battle from the uh gift of battle item reward track that's been added uh so you can now use that reward track if you want to do that one daily achievement chest now also award potions of world versus world experience instead of just a regular experience boosters so now you can increase now it's similar to pvp they said they were going to do this uh, if the uh, participation system worked out and well i guess it worked out so now whenever you finish a pvp match you usually get like pvp potions from reward chests well now from the daily achievement chest you also get world versus world potions that increase your world versus world experience just like it does in pvp which is great to see the outnumbered effect which is the effect that you get when uh, the other team has a lot more players than you do also now grants 50 percent increased participation gain so you'll get a lot more uh progress on your reward track done even if you are outnumbered so that sort of makes it a bit more worth um, they also added a new guild hall upgrade to the war room that unlocks a new potion at the tavern, which increases your War vs. World reward track gain. So it was a nice little addition that I'm sure people will be taking advantage of, because why wouldn't you? It's extra bonus. It's an extra potion, more buffs for you. Always good to see. They also added a new reward track that awards the War vs. World Heroes weapon skins now didn't they also release a hero's armor set has that been put in game yet i honestly don't know i thought they had that and i don't know if that's in game already i probably is in game i just don't war versus what enough i know i covered it in a previous video um i don't know if i mentioned in that video though that it was in the game already regardless though now hero weapon skins are also available and it's a new reward track so uh, I, I don't have any I don't have any images of those in the footage right now, so apologies in that. But um, I'll definitely take a look at them in game. I suggest you take a look at them too, because who knows how? Maybe they look really cool. Uh, the provision the uh, provisions master now also has a sixth pip. So before it only had five pips, and you can basically get five bonuses from it. Now it has a sixth pip, and this is sort of what we saw, right? What we talked about in the last patch, I think, where they said they were going to add a pip that allows players to buy Heart of Thorns recipes, such as the sigils and the runes from the Heroics Notary Vendor. And, well, now you can do that, and you can use your proofs of Heroics and Gold to buy those runes and sigils and uh, the different recipes. So you don't need to just buy them from uh, PvE. So that's good to see as well. And for those of you who do lots of War vs. World, well, you I'm sure you have plenty of those currency anyhow. Now, one of the bigger changes in War vs. World is that the tick timer has been reduced from 15 minutes to 5 minutes, which really surprised me. I didn't, I, I'm pretty sure they've, they've done this to rebalance the entire system and to support faster ticks. And in fact, that's exactly what they say. Objective points per tick, PPT has been re rebalanced to support the faster ticks. Um... Personally, I don't know exactly why they did this. Um, it, maybe it's maybe it's to uh, make progression through reward tracks a bit faster. Maybe it's to uh, make sure that people don't get bored or don't get annoyed by the fact that it's wait 15 minutes every time to get extra experience toward their world versus world level or to gain experience towards the reward track. That would be my guess, and that's a good change because you know this game has always been very revolved around the fact that if you don't have a lot of time, you can just go into any game mode. And you can gain progression and you know you can get a lot more progression every five minute ticks than you could every 15 minute ticks uh but that's that that could be really crucial to a lot of world versus world aspects because i remember when i used to do a lot of world versus world you know, it'd always be 15 minutes oh let's try to let's try to capture a castle or let's try to capture a keep for ticks so we have so we have it for 15 minutes but now it's only every five minutes you might you might see 
uh, a lot more battles or maybe a lot less battles who knows I don't really know how much of a big impact this has on the game mode but it does seem like a substantial change uh, with this they also rebalance the points as I already said camps now only get two points towers four points keeps eight points and castle 12 points and that's pretty much all the world versus world changes that they have made there now, one of the bugs that the game has always had is Guildhall music. In fact, I, I've seen many Reddit threads, people complaining, oh, why hasn't Guildhall music bugs been fixed yet? Why haven't they been fixed yet? It's been like like almost a year now since Heart of Thorns has been out. Well, now, Guild music bugs have been fixed, and I guess those people who are complaining about that can now not complain anymore. On a, a miscellaneous update here, the Amalgamated Gemstones, which are super expensive on a trading with, I think they're like two gold, over two gold. Well, you can now get those in Hero Choice Chests. Usually, you get them from the Exalted uh, Grand Chests. I tend to get like one or two of them every run. Uh, now you can actually pick the amalgamated gemstones and they sell for a huge amount. So um, even more of an incentive to do Arc Basin. As if Arc Basin didn't already have a huge enough incentive to do anyway, now even more of an incentive to do it. And uh, a privateer weapon set. I guess this is the Black Lion uh, gem store section I'm going to go over real quick. The privateer weapon set has been released. And I'll tell you this. I really like this weapon set. I like how the staff looks. I like how the shield looks. Could this be a bigger shield than the guild tower shield that I already have? I got to check on my guardian to see if uh, this t if this shield is big. It's bigger than the guild one. Because if it is, I'm definitely going to buy it. Really nice weapon set. Luckily for me, I have two or three Black Lion tickets. So I'm going to be able to buy some of these. I have heard that these weapons are not tradable so you can't post them on a trading post i don't know why they did that um i've seen two or three threads now on reddit and some on the forums even but people complaining that they should make this tradable uh right now i'm not in game so i wouldn't even be able to tell you if they are tradable but hopefully they fix that because i i do want to see them go on a trading post so people can buy them if they don't if they don't have black line tickets Hopefully they fixed that. I don't know why they made this specific set not tradable. Maybe it's maybe it was a bug. Maybe they forgot to do it. Phoenix Glider has also been in the gem store. It's only available for a limited time. Uh, I'm two days late with this patch. So uh, quite frankly, I don't know if it's still available. It probably is. I don't think it's only going to be a two-day sale. Apologies on that. But uh, hopefully you saw it. And hopefully it's still available now. And the Heroes Die Pack is also in the gem store. So if you want to pick that up, you can. So now let's head on to the one of the uh, more focused portions of the patch, which is the current events. They've once again added a mysterious note at the bottom of the patch notes that says unrest is in Krita. Now, uh, this basically follows the second, this basically follows the, uh, the bandit current event, the bandit bounties current event. Uh, I highly recommend you to do the first part of that bounties current event if you have not done it yet. And I believe the first part was simply just uh, getting encrypted orders from bandits in Brisbane Wildlands. You kill them, you get the encrypted orders. You go to Divinity's Reach, talk to the guy in the center of the map, and he tells you to hunt the bounties around the uh, around the uh, Crichton area. And you basically complete Bounties Part 1. If you've done that already, well, there is a Bounties Part 2 now, which is great. Uh, essentially, if you've done Part 1, you will get a letter in the mail... And I forget what item it is exactly, but it's, it's like a, a bandit death mark token, I think, or something like that. And essentially, that marks the fact that you've completed part one and you can do part two. Now, there are three achievements to this new current event. Uh, I've only completed one of them because the posters one which you're seeing in the back right now essentially the easiest one to do here is just to go around tyria and look for these posters there are several guides already out on the internet showing you where these posters are uh, if you're following the footage right now you'll probably see me pick up all the posters anyhow however if you go on reddit dolphy has a guide as well if you want to check that out i'm pretty sure you'll find it if you just type in uh guild wars 2 uh, bounties current event part 2 uh, poster locations. I'm sure you'll definitely see some search results and you can just follow the guide there. So that one there you can easily complete and it gives you uh, I think 11 achievement points. Then the uh, two other achievement points revolve around killing the new bounty targets. Once again they've added I think five or four new, I think it's five new yeah, five new bounty targets, and essentially, once again, they will respawn every 10 minutes. If you go to each of the locations, uh, once again, I think Dolphy's guide is really good for this. They, uh, she has a, uh, 
a great guide on this where the posted locations are and also the uh, locations for all the bounty targets are if you want to go over there and check it out uh, all the waypoints are there all the specific locations for these bounty targets are there and all you gotta do is go to the locations kill the five targets and you gain another 10 achievement points and then there's also a legendary uh, bounty target which spawns after you kill uh, one of the bounty target, one of the regular bounty targets, and that gives you another 10 achievement points, and uh, that completes that current event achievement as well. So those are the three achievements you have, the poster one, the legendary one, and just killing the five bounty targets. Uh, they're fairly easy. You could probably complete them all in one day. Uh, there's no time-gated stuff this time like last time. I still haven't even completed the last current event. I think I have like 7 out of 10 of the lay energy completed, so I still need to do three of those. But this time around, you'll be able to complete these all in one day so you don't really need to worry about it anymore after today or after well if you've done them already you don't need to worry about it at all so great to see a lot more of these current events coming into the game really enjoying them really appreciating the fact that you're doing this because it does it does make it it does make me look forward to something to do in pve uh, new content wise every two weeks now because it seems like they are releasing stuff every two weeks so we'll probably see another patch come at the end of june um could it be living world season three <laughs> i highly doubt it uh I, I still want living world season three to start but we all know it's probably not, it's probably not gonna start to maybe september or august sadly uh, they did say they'll try to make a July release, so, I mean, they'll try to make a summer release, and summer is still July, right? I mean, August is fall, I think, so, who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, apart from that, though, I don't think there's much else to mention in the uh, patch, though, so hopefully you enjoyed the quick little summary. Try to make the video fairly quick. Um, how long is it? Oh, it's a little over 20 minutes, which I guess is I guess is, I guess is average for time. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, if you want to talk about anything in the patch, uh, definitely leave it in the comment section below, but, and I'll be definitely down there talking to you guys about anything. Are you guys excited for Legendary Armor? Who's doing Legendary Armor Collection? I'm probably going to do it, but quite frankly, I still need to do all the raids. I've only completed like I think one raid encounter, so I need to get going on that. I will be doing. I would. Tr I'll try to complete the new raid wing today, though, uh, because it seems to be like like I said, what I've heard, it's a bit easier and a bit easier to understand. So I'm gonna try to do it. If I end up completing it, uh, maybe I'll record some footage definitely, and I'll definitely talk about the raid wing a bit more in depth if I end up completing it and if I end up understanding it uh, really well. And uh, maybe that'll be like a little guide, I guess. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'll see how I do and uh, what will happen next. So thank you for watching the video. As always, uh, if you like this video, if you like any of my other content on the channel, you can always donate $8 to my Patreon page. Anything as low as that is always very helpful and very much appreciated. All you got to do is click the card in the top right corner of the screen. It'll bring you to the page. And uh, with that, that's pretty much it. I also have a tutorials channel, an advice channel, a vlogging channel, and a music channel. I would check those out. Links in the descriptions as well as on the end card. And yeah, this is GSMLSmart. And I'll be back soon as you think. Don't go anywhere. See you guys tomorrow.